Today, I wanna to talk about something incredibly fun and exciting, file management. Now, no, wait, don't stop the video. Don't go to another video. I promise this is gonna be very important. One thing I've learned is if you're gonna perform on stage using tracks, backing tracks, you have to do it in an efficient way. And the way you do that is by having good file management techniques. Hey, this is Will Doggett. Today, we're gonna to talk about that, managing files in Ableton Live, particularly with a focus on managing files for live performance. So let's get started. I think about file management kind of like uh, changing guitar strings. As a guitar player, I have to know how to change my guitar strings. I have to do it often. Now, I don't get gigs for knowing how to change my guitar strings, but if I don't know how to change my guitar strings, I can guarantee it I'm gonna lose the gig because my guitar won't stay in tune and I can't play a chord in tune. Now, to me, file management is a bit like that, right? You can step on stage and know how to do really great things with Ableton Live, but if the artist you're working with or worship leader you're working with turns around and says, hey, let's go to the version that, that has a double chorus and you just kind of look at them cross-eyed and have no idea where it is or how to get to it, uh, you're not gonna be able to keep the gig for very, very long. So I think file management is very important. Now, most people don't like talking about it, I do, but it's a question I get often. So I wanna take you through my process for managing files for live performance. So this may not apply to everyone, uh, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. Now, if you do something differently, let me know in the comments what you do differently and why you do that. So let me show you how I start. Very first thing that's essential to me is I manage sets, not stems. What I mean by that is if I get stems from a recording or I download stems from multi-tracks for a worship set, uh, what I make sure to do is I create a, a, a Ableton session particularly for that song. I don't keep the stems in a folder. I drag those stems into an Ableton session and manage those stems as their own Ableton file. Another thing I do is I make sure to name all my files exactly the same way. So let me show you one of my favorite tricks that's gonna kind of take us into all this. One, I use Live's browser all the time to access and to load uh, sessions and sets into another Ableton set. So I'm gonna click the arrow uh, here to the left of my Live set, which opens Live's browser. I'm gonna go to the add folder uh, area here. Now you can see I have a folder called Ableton. And within that Ableton folder, I have my files and my templates separate. So I'm gonna uh, click files and hit open. Okay, and then I'm gonna do add folder again. Uh, and let's go back a level. Let's go to that Ableton folder. I'm gonna click templates and hit open there. So now what I've done is I've added the two places that I go often, both a folder that has all my files, all my stems in it, and then a folder that has all my templates, my ProPresenter templates, my program change templates, and my template for using Ableton for keys. And I've got those separate and I've named those so I can quickly get to them. Now, if we look at the file section here, you're gonna see each one of my stems has its own folder. So for instance, for the song Living Hope, I have a folder named Living Hope, and if I expand that and open that up, you're gonna then see my Ableton Live set. Again, not stems, but my Ableton Live set within that folder. Same thing for this song, and same thing for this song. Now, another thing I wanna point out that I mentioned earlier, every single one of these songs is named exactly the same way. It's the, the same naming convention. Uh, I have the song name, and then I have the key, and then I have the tempo. That really quickly helps me uh, understand uh, what key, what tempo the song is so I can quickly get to it. So let me show you practically one of the things I do. I'm gonna open this file up and let's start from here. And let's say we're in uh, a, a performance or we're in a rehearsal and the worship leader or the band director or the music director turns over and says, hey, let's double that bridge. So I could go here, I could select this bridge section. I could use my edit time commands. We've talked about them before. I've put the link to that previous tutorial in the comments here. Command shift D is gonna duplicate time and now I have another bridge. So what do we do in this case? Now I have that song that has the song name, again, the key, the tempo, what do I do now? So what I'm gonna do is do file save as. So I'm gonna do command shift S, which is gonna open my save dialog. A couple things I wanna point out here. One, I wanna make sure that I save this new session as a completely brand new Ableton Live project and then a set within that project. I do not save multiple sets within a project folder. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a second. So what I wanna do is make sure I click on the, the main folder for this song. Again, not the live project. I don't wanna click here. I'm gonna click on this folder here work back to there, and then I'm gonna save this file. Before I do that though, I wanna mention that there's a change there. So I'm gonna keep the song, I'm gonna keep the key, the tempo, and then I'm gonna go here and say uh, double bridge. 
okay? And then I'm gonna hit save. So now I know I have a completely separate Ableton Live file that has this edited arrangement that I can quickly get back to, uh, which is gonna make this super, super easy, again, to manage those files and keep track of it. Now, one other thing you have to do before you move on is go up to the file menu here and do collect all and save. Now we've talked about that before, I've linked to that video as well. Uh, I'm gonna hit okay. What that's gonna do is it's gonna go grab where those files are uh, initially referenced and stored, and it's gonna pull them into this, uh, this folder so that they're always there in that live project folder. And if I go to share uh, and send that set to anyone, I'm gonna make sure I grab that whole project folder so that I have it. So now we've got our folders for each individual song. Within that song, let's actually go back to our browser here and you can see what this looks like. Now we see we have our song, and then we have uh, our two separate Ableton Live sessions with the key, with the tempo, and then the distinction there at the end if we have a different arrangement. Now, sometimes though, you do your best to do this, you do your best to manage this, but maybe you get into a performance and in the middle of the performance or in sound check or rehearsal uh, as you're getting ready for service or for that performance, some edit happens, some change happens. So let's say for instance, we're here and suddenly we decide, let's take this A section out of the song. In this case, I'm gonna do my delete time command, command shift delete to get rid of that. Now I'm going to hit save, so I save my set. But at the end of that performance, I want to have that file that I just had uh, as something I can reference later. Now, don't do what most of us do and what uh, I tend to do if I'm not careful here, which is just leave this in the set and hope that you remember uh, what set that you played that song that particular way. When you step off stage, the same way, again, as a guitar player thinks about changing their guitar strings or making sure they pack their equipment up well, think about your Ableton session and go, okay, were there arrangement changes in particular songs? And in this case, yes, we did change the arrangement of the song. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave my set open. I'm gonna do that same save as command. And we're gonna create, let's say a new file folder here. So let's back out to that Ableton folder. We'll go to files. I'm gonna create a new folder and just call this Will's song, okay? And then let's name our live set as Will's song. We're gonna pick the key of D. I think that's what this is in, and 100 BPM, okay? I'm gonna hit save. So now, before I do collect all and save, I'm gonna to select to the right of this song. Okay, I'm gonna do Command, Shift, Delete. Okay, that deletes the content to the right of it. And then I'm gonna select everything to the left of this. I can hold minus to quickly zoom out. And I'm gonna do Command, Shift, Delete to delete everything to the left of that song. Now I'm gonna hit save again. And now that I've cleaned this up and removed all the samples I don't need, now I'm gonna go back up to file and do collect all and save. So now, doing this, we're managing our files well before we step on stage, then we're managing our files well after we step off stage. And this is again gonna really quickly allow us to go find that arrangement that we did maybe a couple months ago and drag it into our set. Or it's gonna allow us to really quickly open a song and edit things well and keep track of that. So before we wrap up, I wanna share one of my favorite tips that I use, especially when I'm talking with churches and using tracks across multiple campuses or even across just one campus as a church. Now, if you're not a worship leader, not performing at church, this still applies to you, the first half, the second half, just specifically to churches. So after I get everything formatted and ready to go on my internal drive, I move all those files over to my external U32 shadow uh, working kind of drive. That's where I keep files that I, I work on. Now, once I'm done working with those files, I'm not using them in a set, I store them on an archive drive, and then I also use Dropbox. Now, I use Dropbox not in the typical sense for sync across computers, but I upload files to Dropbox just for storage. And I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tricks. So, when I'm done with the file, I zip it or compress it, and then I go over to Dropbox. And when you go to the compressed file, I can hit share. I can create a link for this file. And then if I copy the link, you could see with that copied, let's go just open a new browser tab here. I'm gonna paste this in. Now look at the end of the file. It says DL equals zero. What I'm gonna do is just delete the zero and add a one. And then now I wanna copy that URL. So I'm gonna do Command L to select it, Command C to copy it. So you could paste this link anywhere. You could put it in a, a Google Sheet. You could put it in an Excel file so you have kind of a list of a repertoire of songs. Uh, but again, if you're specifically a church or uh, doing this as a worship leader, music director for a church, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite uh, things to do. So I take this link, then I go over to my song and planning center. I'm gonna press the plus sign here uh, under files. 
I'm gonna go to link and I'm gonna paste this link. And again, making sure that I have DL equals one at the end of that. And then I can change the name to Dream Stems. I'm gonna attach it to the arrangement. I'm gonna hit submit. And now I'm gonna go over to my service plane here. Let's add a song. So I'm gonna go up here to add item, select add a song, and I'm gonna search for the song I just added, which is Dream. So now I'm gonna select my song and go ahead and hit accept. And now what's great about this is as I go to plan my service and add my songs, get them in the right order, I can hover over this link section in Planning Center and click it and it's automatically gonna download that file for me. So what I do is I build my set and then I go through and download all my files onto my internal drive, build my set with all my songs in it, do collect on save and then delete those files I downloaded because I have them stored on Dropbox and I don't need them on my internal drive. Now, if you wanna learn more about managing files for live performance, how to use Ableton Live for tracks, either as a worship leader at a church or in any venue for any type of music, then head to fromstudiotostage.com. You can start a free seven day trial that gives you access to every single course and access to the incredible community of people that are learning to use Ableton Live to perform on stage. So we would love to see you there. Now, thanks so much for watching this tutorial, and I will see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.